to uh, TYC. Next, I would like to invite a uh, representative of North America at the Office of Tibet, Washington, D.C., Mr. Murasrila, to speak up. Aloha Tashkile to all of you. I think we are running behind the schedule, so I'd like to go straight into my talk. Thank you for inviting me to this wonderful event uh, organized by the Tibetan Youth Congress, New York, New Jersey, and co-sponsored by eight or nine uh, grassroots organizations. It is inspiring to see all of you working together as a coalition for a common cause, which are freedom, human rights, and democracy. As victims of the same perpetrators that communist China, all of us share similar stories of oppression, unending sufferings to our people, forcible occupation of our land, destruction of our culture and religion. As I reflect on situations, I find striking patterns and similarities in the way China has been inflicting atrocities on our people. For example, Tibet and Xinjiang, East Turkestan, which, which we like to call, had the same party chief, Chen Chen Dao, who is mastermind and responsible for causing immense death and destruction in East Turkestan. He was the same guy, the same person who let loose a saga of terror and clamp down in Tibet prior to his posting in Xinjiang. Tibet has been the testing ground for what we see or what we are watching in Xinjiang right now. Similarly, conditions for reverting Hong Kong back to China in 1997 had striking similarities with infamous 17-point agreement signed between Tibet and China in 1951. Both agreements promised some kind of provisions for one country, two system life, which unfortunately China herself never respected. 46 years apart, but the same story. As a result, in 1959, Tens and thousands of Tibetans marched the street of Hassa in protest, much like the people of Hong Kong did it in millions in recent times. For Taiwan, interestingly, Chinese authorities demanded His Holiness Dalai Lama to make a statement that Tibet and Taiwan are integral part of China. This was such a manipulative an unreasonable condition laid for negotiations on Tibet moving forward. Obviously, this never happened because His Holiness stands for truth and never speaks lies like Chinese leaders do. In contrast to Chinese demand, His Holiness said, let history be history, unquote. So we can spend hours talking about similarities in how China has been manipulating us, inflicting atrocities and violence upon us, our people. So it's so encouraging to see that we stand in solidarity with one another in fights against the totalitarian regime, which has now become a global threat, which is the topic today. Therefore, I deeply appreciate and welcome your joint action and initiatives. Nawala and Toji Siddhanla, the President of Regional Tibetan Youth Congress and Executive Director of the SFT, told me that when Elmhurst Public Library at Queens put up a propaganda for the exhibition about Tibet, many of you joined the Tibetan protesters and supported them. Thank you. Here I wanted to thank <coughs> both the organizations who has given a leadership, and the community members, Tibetan community members in New York, New Jersey, who participated in big number for the timely action and timely leadership. Thank you. The library has to finally shut down the ongoing photo exhibition 
staged by the Chinese consulate in New York City, which is a part of their disinformation campaign about Tibet. The truth has finally prevailed. I'm glad that this joint initiative will also honor our CTV president, Dr. Lakshman Sangye. That's wonderful. Dr. Sangye was elected for two terms by the Tibetan diaspora in more than 30 or 35 countries. He was the first Sikkim democratically elected political leader of Tibet. I had the fortune of working with Dr. Sankhya in Dharamsala as education secretary and uh, later on as a minister, and then now serving as a representative of His Holiness and CTA. So if I may add, Dr. Sankhya has provided an excellent leadership for Tibet movement. He's, he's a role model for our younger generation. The personal sacrifice he has made by returning to Dharamsala and serve CTA is an example for our future generations to emulate. I believe Dr. Sangye has set a very high standard of performance and leadership for our future CTA leadership. By honoring Dr. Sangye, the co-sponsors are just going to say you are honoring the Central Tibetan Administration and people of Tibet. I therefore like to thank all the sponsors, particularly non-Tibetan organizations, for honoring the pres our president. It means a lot to the Tibetan people, a proud movement indeed. Before I conclude, I also would like to offer my sincere congratulations to our former Sikyong for this award, and thank you to the New Congress and the sponsoring organizations for giving me a chance to speak today. Thank you. Thank you very much.